Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be doing a, another mod review for the mod called Roman Revival. But before this video can begin, don't forget to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. We are basically about to hit 1k subscribers. I think we're like 5 away or something like the time I'm recording this. We're really close. We probably reached it by the time this video goes out. Anyway, make sure that you leave a like on the video. Most importantly, subscribe to the channel as it helps out tremendously. And now let's go ahead and take a look at the mod. This mod called Roman Revival is a mod that basically overhauls all of Byzantium. So this mod creator says on the mod page that their favorite nation in all of you for is Byzantium, as I'm sure it is for a lot of people who are watching this, as it's really cool. And the mod creator wanted to make a mod that basically enhances the Byzantine experience as as you know, playing Byzantium in base game EU4, it really doesn't have everything that it should. It has some flavor, of course, but doesn't have as much as it really could when you compare it to other nations, such as, let's say, Spain or France, especially in the upcoming 1.35 update. This mod adds the ability to convert back to paganism, allows you to hold triumphs for every major province that you recover. It's basically an event, and I'll show you those in just a second. It allows you to shape the empire with extra missions and custom gov reforms. It allows you to reorganize the army and the civilian aspects of your nation. You can expand outside of Europe. It allows you to reorganize the ancient Roman legions. I wonder what that means. You can hold a pagan celebration, which is a decision there in the mod tab. It allows you to hold triumphs from defeating a strong enemy. So I assume the Ottomans are definitely probably one of those. It adds a dynamic flag that changes depending on if you are pagan, a republic, or if you remain orthodox. So right now, as you can see, we have the normal Byzantine flag, which is the Orthodox flag, and it allows you to put custom privileges and factions within your estates. So as I mentioned, the Byzantine mission tree has been completely revamped in this mod. Look at all of these new missions. I cross-reference the base game EU4 Byzantine mission tree with this one, and the base game EU4 one lo looks pathetic when you compare it to the one in the Roman Revival mod. I mean, look at all of these things here. I mean, you can expand to Africa, you can do imperial reforms, you can choose different paths to go down, so you can reinstate this word, which I don't know if it's allowed on YouTube, but you can see it. You can do all this other stuff. You can have the games, you can revamp the Roman aqueducts, Nordic steel, and all of these amazing things. This mission tree is basically endless. I mean, look at all this stuff. Look how far I'm scrolling down. It's absolutely amazing. And I mentioned before that you can also do triumphs in this mod, which, which if you don't know, triumphs were kind of like these celebrations, militaristic type of celebrations and parades when they would conquer a new area. You kind of had Caesar do a triumph and things like that. And this mod actually brings it back for the Byzantines. So you can do all these different triumphs for Egypt, for Anatolia, for all of these other ones once you capture these territories, as you can see. And you just have to own them too. You don't actually have to accord them, which is really cool. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is utilizing console commands, I'm going to actually make it so that we can own some of these provinces so that I can show you not just how the triumphs work, but also just how the various government reforms work as in order for this mod to really start to snowball and get to the really good parts, you of course need to start playing and activating all of these missions and start conquering a ton of land. And honestly, I don't really feel like restarting to trying to get a really perfect start to fight the Ottomans and do this all organically. So I'm just going to go ahead and use console commands so I can show you all really quickly how these various triumphs work, what the event looks like, and to show you how you can convert back to Roman paganism and to show you the various other amazing government reforms that come along with this mod. So after annexing some territory and giving myself some cash, you can actually complete some of these events here called the Legion Reorganized. Basically what it does is you lose 200 ducats, but then it gives you text here and it allows you to complete that certain event. You can do that for the other ones here as well. As you can see, you just spend the money and you can reorganize all these other legions. We can go ahead and just finish them off here. Another thing that you can do once you have some of these provinces is actually improve Roman infrastructure, which you have to spend some manpower and you will gain some manpower and some dev in this province right here. Actually, one interesting thing about this event is it actually allows you to do this in multiple different provinces. So as you can see, it changed. It was like Justinianople or something now. Now it's Constantinople. As you can see, it basically gives you free dev, one dev in every category in the same province. 
This is really cool. Of course, it's at the expense of a thousand man power and a hundred ducats. But late game or even mid game when you have a ton of trade money, this is an amazing way to just get a bunch of free dev throughout your nation. So this mod definitely has thought about stuff like that as well. So now that we have conquered all of Anatolia, or rather I just did the console command for it, you can take this decision, which is a triumph for Anatolia, where it basically gives you a ton of army tradition. That is a lot of army tradition, 25 army tradition and 10 prestige it basically has this event text here and makes your armies absolutely amazing and now we have actually annex egypt and basically everything is the same it's slightly different event text for the mod however everything is the same when it comes to the amount of prestige and army nutrition that you get now what i'm going to go ahead and show you is how you can convert to paganism and the various new government forms that exist for the roman empire in this mod and once you own rome you can go ahead and actually convert back to paganism so i actually clicked the mission because i didn't know this was the one but it's called the second apostate once you own rome all you need to do is own it complete this mission and you can go ahead and convert back to paganism so as you can see roman paganism gives plus 10 percent manpower recovery speed and plus one tolerance of heretics and you can actually select these deities they don't have a picture right now but i imagine the mod creator is probably going to add that you can basically select all of these and they give absolutely amazing modifiers minus 10 ae minus 2 national unrest some extra siege ability and shock damage galley combat ability i don't know what this one minerva gives because it's all squished together but as you can see these are absolutely amazing the ui doesn't really fit however hopefully the mod creator will work on that and yeah you can go ahead and select some dd so that's how you convert back to rogan paganism in this mod called rowan revival you basically need to just own rome and once you own rome you can complete this mission called the second apostate click it and you will automatically convert back to roman paganism not only that but once you convert back to roman paganism your flag actually changes like i stated at the beginning of the video your flag will change from the base game byzantine flag over to this really nice eagle so once you form the roman empire and have the borders you can actually choose which kind of government to be so i showed you all the roman empire with the emperor which you start out as as byzantium and the various reforms that it had. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you the gov reforms if you choose to become the Roman Republic. Of course, you have some of the unique ones. Most of these are from the base game. We'll just go ahead and scroll down here. However, for the parliament, if you choose the parliament, it's actually called the Roman Senate, which is really nice. Overall, this mod is absolutely amazing. It is really cool. It doesn't add a ton of stuff, at least to the game. But what it does add is it makes the nation of Byzantium much much, much more flavorful. Honestly, the Byzantine mission tree is absolutely pathetic when you compare it to this one. And even the Byzantine mission tree just in general is not really that powerful. It is quite old and it is starting to show its age, especially as we get closer and closer to EU4 1.35. So definitely go ahead and check out this mod. I will leave it as a link in the description. My personal favorite of this mod is honestly the Triumphs. I love the Triumph system. Even if it really doesn't do anything specific, it does add a lot of flavor to the mod another thing that is really amazing is that you can go ahead and convert back to paganism i love that you can bring back roman paganism to eu4 i really do wish that this religion was in the base game i know that if it was in base game eu4 everyone would try to convert to it since it's very overpowered the fact that you can choose a deity but nevertheless i do love how this mod has brought it back into the game and really can allow you to play whichever kind of roman empire you want to play do you want to play more of a late roman empire with an emperor do you want to have a roman republic you can really choose do you want to say a christian roman empire do you want to be a pagan roman empire this mod really does allow you to choose, and I love mods that do that, where they add a lot of stuff, but you can kind of pick and choose how your game works out, and you can choose how you run your own nation. This has been a short little mod review for the mod called Roman Revival. Don't forget to leave a link on the video and subscribe to the channel. We are basically about to hit 1,000 subscribers, or we might have already hit it by the time this video goes up. I actually did want to say that this is probably going to be the last mod review, at least for a while, since I was kind of pushing all of these mod reviews 
games out after I stopped guides. If you saw that in my community post, I kind of stopped doing the guides and I was really pushing these mods out. The reason I was doing that is because they're all about to become irrelevant, at least not all of them, but some of them might stop working with 1.35. 1.35 is going to change a lot of how the nations work. So I really wanted to review as many of these 1.34 mods as possible before I had to wait basically months or maybe even a year, depending on how long it takes for these mod creators to catch up. And sometimes mod creators don't even update their mods. There's plenty of mods I found in the Steam Workshop that are really good, but they're from before 1.30. They're from years ago. So sometimes mod creators just stop, they get bored, or they don't want to update their mods. So I wanted to find as many good mods as possible to show you all before 1.35 came. But that's all I have for you today. So thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.